Good evening, class. I'm gonna to talk to you about Ambrose Bierce. Um, prior to this assignment, I really didn't know anything about him. Uh, I literally Googled interesting people from the second half of the 19th century, and sure enough, he came up and had a pretty interesting, both economic and personal story, so I figured the intersection of both of those would make for a pretty interesting uh, lecture here. So Ambrose Bierce, was born uh, June 24th in 1842 in Ohio. He was one of 13 children. Uh, his parents were poor farmers, uh, but they were very well read and uh, they had both a family tradition of the literary arts and that ultimately was passed on to Ambrose. Um, he spent his early days helping on the farm and then when he was 15, uh, he went and became an apprentice at a print shop for an abolitionist newspaper that was in Indiana. Uh, that was when he was 15, and then later he went and joined the Union Army and fought in the Civil War. Um, he saw action in a lot of major campaigns. He was uh, at Chickamauga, uh, and he got injured at the Battle for Kennesaw Mountain, which I live in Georgia, so it's actually not far from where I am. It's like 20 minutes from here. Uh, he was injured there, uh, but he continued his service kind of on and off, um, after recuperating, and then he went into topography, ended his career in the army as a topographer, and then uh, briefly went and worked at a mint in Huntsville, Alabama. Ultimately, he left the mint and went out to San Francisco, California, and then began working as a journalist out there. Uh, he worked for several different newspapers over the course of his career, uh, and ultimately wound up working for uh, William Randolph Hearst. Um, Ambrose Bierce is an example of an American misfit who was able to navigate a rapidly changing world following the Civil War. He was a veteran who capitalized on the changing worldviews of the American people following the war, uh, and his literary and journalistic career focused on realism, uh, which emerged in stark contrast to the romanticism uh, of the Enlightenment ideals, uh, Enlightenment ideals, which were washed away by the blood of you know one and a half million war dead from the Civil War, um, the effects of the war on the population can be seen in that changing literary sphere, um, along with the huge toll it took on human life. Um, there was also a huge process of industrialization, uh, and that industrialization was most prominent in New England, the Mid-Atlantic states, and the Midwest. The sprawling, newly industrialized belt of land between the two was bridged by the railways. Uh, a very interesting story uh, and an example of how culture, economy, and personal fortunes can shape the story of a life is when uh, Pacific Union Railroad and Central Pacific Railroad received an investment of $130 million from the federal government. They were going to try to make the Intercontinental Railway. After receiving this low interest loan, uh, the railway companies decided, eh, we don't really want to pay it back. Uh, and so they were able to find some legislators who were amenable to the idea of them not paying that money back. Well, William Randolph Hearst found out about it and then sent Ambrose Bierce to go basically on a tip to stop that from happening. So Bierce shows up. The representatives from the railways tried to bribe him. He wasn't having any of it. He said, you can give me $130 million and then write it expressly back to the American taxpayers. They were still gonna go through with the deal until he raised such a stink about it that the American people uh, had a huge public outcry and ultimately that deal fell through. Um, that's an illustration of a man who had no interest in money but wanted to tell the world a realistic appraisal of the Civil War. Um, and he wanted to tell realistic stories of the macabre, which had been part of the American spirit experience since the war. Um, he had to carry a pistol around because he was making enemies on every front. The socialists didn't like him. The rich didn't like him. The industrials, uh, industrial capitalists didn't like him. Basically, anybody who had an agenda other than the welfare of the people basically came after him. Um, Bierce's literary career was interrupted by various bouts of wanderlust where he'd go off and try to do something else, uh, but he rose to prominence in several newspapers and ultimately would always return to writing. Um, he tried to work for a mine, the mine failed, he tried to start his own business, his own business failed, but ultimately he accumulated enough money to survive comfortably in all of his failed attempts at other businesses. 
Pierce was able to make a good living by investing in himself because of the increasingly available disposable income of the American people and because technological developments in the industrial, industrial capacity allowed for his work to be widely disseminated at a national level. Industrial workers were capable of aggregating wealth in ways that were not possible for their agricultural forebears, and this enabled an economy of ideas to flourish, particularly in a national macroculture that had been exposed to so many martial evils. Uh, this, coupled with disillusionment and exposure to horrific realities of war, enabled Bierce to become a pioneer in horror fiction, which was a previously underrepresented element of literature in America. Unfortunately, ultimately, Bierce became increasingly reclusive after leaving the newspaper business in 1909. Uh, he published a few books by himself, uh, and then he disappeared in 1913, and nobody really knows what happened to him. So that's a very brief understanding of the intersection of economics, personal um, entrepreneurialism, and history. Thank you very much.